What brought you to this project? I loved eating in my college cafeteria. I thought it was just the coolest thing, how my classmates and I all shared tables and you could sit wherever you wanted and the food was hot and it rotated. And I wasn't familiar with the cafeteria format. So I started researching where the cafeteria came from in my school library. And so in my library, I came across the automat. And I really just, I loved the idea of it. And so I just kept, you know, I was kind of obsessed with it. And I was a 35 millimeter projectionist at the time at my college town's movie palace from the 1920s. And it just made sense as like a little pet project of mine. I, you know, I was very into horn and hard art and I, I loved my cafeteria. Nothing like the coffee at the automat. I love those little windows that open. And sometimes what you wanted was missing and you knocked on the window, waved to the person. <laughs> but how did you get Mel Brooks involved in this project? That theater that I was working at in Washington State, he had a friend of his that was a guest of ours. And his friend and I became Facebook friends after that event. You know, I was sort of like his host. I was driving his friend around and, you know, I was just hanging out. His, this gentleman's name is Carl Gottlieb and he is a screenwriter. And he sent me a message saying that he loved eating at Horn and Hard Art when he used to live in New York City and that he was really excited I was doing the film. He wanted to know if it was okay if he told his friend Mel Brooks about it. <laughs> um, so he told Mel and then, you know, next thing you know, like I'm on an airplane to Los Angeles to film the, the interview. Use everything I've said. I'm popular, I'm famous, make me the spearhead. And then Mel recruits Carl Reiner to be in the film too. Who was the most surprising or, or the interview that you most enjoyed getting for this, uh, for this documentary? He's not everyone's favorite character in the film. And I've, you know, I've heard some like mixed, you know, sentiments about it, but probably Howard Schultz. For me, when I learned that Horn and Hardart was one of his inspirations, or Starbucks, it, it was like the best news I could have possibly received, not just for a storyline, but also because I had been saying for years, I think Horn and Hard Art's really important. And then here's now the proof, you know, one of the largest entrepreneurs in the whole world in the food and beverage industry saying, this was part of my inspiration. I think about this all the time. It's on my wall, you know. He so. has that picture of the actual little boxes that they, the food came out of. And it's, he says that it, that's just so important to him because it was like magic. He's the one who said it was like magic when the food came through. Because it doesn't matter how you feel about Starbucks. You can't argue with the fact that this thing, Horn and Hard Art, it now, it, it went on to inspire this future, this great chain of the, the, the future. I mean, Horn and Hard Art, obviously it's gone, but it inspired the people who went there. It lives on in those of you who, who did. And it also lives on in the ideas that came out of it. As a boy, I was mystified. I became a merchant the day that I was in that automatic. When Mel told me his favorite things about the film after he watched it, his top two favorite things were his back and forth with Carl Reiner and then having Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Colin Powell. He really felt that that elevated to have political dignitaries in this just elevates the story to another level. What did the automat mean to the communities that it served? Well, the automat for many people was a lifeline. For many people, it was just a, you know, a wonderful place to go, but it was this reliable fixture 
of people's lives. It was part of the fabric of the cities that it existed in for many, many, many decades. And it was a place you could count on to stay warm, to be welcome, to have good food in a beautiful space. And it was never boring, you know? It was, it was always an interesting place and it attracted interesting people. And when, you know, you ask why did the, did the automat show up in so many movies and television shows and cartoons, it's because the people who were writing and creating these things, they were doing it in the automats. The automat was a source of inspiration for people and it was a place that people liked to go to work. What else did you find that, that made it magical for people? Wow, well, definitely the, for all the kids that went there, just the memories of they got to handle their own nickels and they got to decide what they wanted. Everyone tells me that um, it was freedom. Uh, of course, all the pies, everyone just, you know, people gush about the, the pies. It was like a wonderland in there. And people have these memories. It was wonderful because it was a, it was a multi-generational place. Um, it was passed down through generations, you know, you know, your grandparents would go there, then they would take your parents there, and then your parents would take you there. And people associate it with these memories of loved ones who have since passed on. So it's just this beautiful, you know, it, when people think of the automat, they think of the, the people that they went there with. 